Good morning. Um, I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. It's currently 7.45 and I'm going to go out to get a coffee and read some of my book. I've just started Frances Hardinger's, oh my gosh, what's it called? Like Shadow of the Sea and it's really good. I started it last night and it's just so whimsical and exactly what I was hoping it would be. One of my favourite like things to do in the morning is just sit and read. It's such a great start to the day. So today I was mainly working on my dissertation because I've got a deadline with my supervisor next week. But in this voiceover, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the Women in Print module that I'm doing. I'm loving this module so much. And last week we looked at Antonius by Mary Sidney Herbert. I just love how this module is getting us to question canonicity and what counts as good literature. What does it mean for something to be good? Shakespeare, Milton, Johnson, these are the authors that we think of when we think of the 17th century. It's only pretty recently that we've started to look at female writers at all, even wonderful ones like Mary Sidney Herbert. So on that question of canonicity, this week we were looking at translated texts. Antonius is a translation from a French text by Garnier and we were championing the translator as an author in their own right, which is especially important in the early modern period when this was one of the main ways that female authors did write. So when Mary Sidney Herbert translated Garnier's Antonius, she put Cleopatra on the English stage for the first time. Like this predates Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. And it's funny because many critics, like older critics, older scholarship, have looked at this and called it uninteresting and uninspired because it reads like a line by line translation. But this is just not true when you look at it more deeply. Um, Bell and Cottery recently created a critical edition with very granular footnotes which compare the English and the French and these small differences are fascinating to see because you see that Mary Sidney Herbert does have an agenda and that she is making critical decisions here. I read a wonderful article by Yasmin Arshad, for example, which argues that Sidney Herbert is challenging the image of Cleopatra as a seductress in her translation. If you do want to learn more, I'll link this edition in a few essays below, but I've also written a very short blog post on my website with some unpolished thoughts if you wanted a quick introduction. Yeah, I'm working on my dissertation at the moment and just doing like very granular research and I haven't found out all that much but I found out little tidbits which are quite useful. I'm doing primary um, based research at the moment so looking through um, manuscripts and account books looking for some very specific details and it's some of my favourite kind of research to do, it's really satisfying and it makes you feel a bit like a detective, but um, it's also quite time consuming and you don't kind of like see much for your work after some time. So it's 10.40 and I've, you know, on paper barely done anything. Yeah, I'm gonna head to the Western Library, which is where all of the like, manuscripts are kept. Um, I'm doing one of my essays on Anna Trapnell, who was a female mystic, and I've requested a printed copy of her prophetic experience, which was printed in 1654. And I'm really excited to see that. So I'm gonna, after I've um, eaten and finished up with um, reading this article, I'm going to 
head over there. It's now four o'clock and I managed to write like a first draft of chapter one of my dissertation. Um, I really wasn't planning on writing it this soon but my dissertation supervisor is a big proponent of writing as you go along and I've got a meeting with her next week so she just wanted to see something that I'm working on. Um, I'm very aware that my research isn't like fully done and I'm caveating that hugely but um, like I've, I've written something now which is quite good but um, as I was going through there were things I realised I wanted to learn more about and there are kind of still and there are sections of it that I'm not happy with that I want to review and edit before I send it to her um, so I'm just going to go through and add in lots of little comments of things that I need to research or add in also guess who is coming down to stay for the evening and then tomorrow you probably actually already know because I bet she's in the thumbnail but um Jade's coming down to Oxford for um just the night and tomorrow and I cannot wait to see her I wanted to have a good study day to day so that I could fully switch off and just spend time with her uh this evening and tomorrow because I haven't seen her for ages and also taking full switch offs from work can be really good you can come back feeling really refreshed if you take a full day off sometimes so I would recommend. I also want to make a rough plan of things to do with Jade um, and things I want to show her in Oxford or that we should go and see or do so I'm going to quickly make a note of that too but first of all I'm going to do the comments. Also talking about Jade because actually this is weirdly relevant I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video which is Skillshare and I say that that's relevant because Jade has actually got a fantabulous why was fantabulous the first word I thought of? Um, because Jade has actually got a fantastic study skills, study tips class on Skillshare. It's like a whole course that you can do where she's researched for evidence-based study tips and kind of put it all together in one short course. So if you do get Skillshare, then you can try out that course. But other than Jade's study course, there are other people who are sharing great study advice. Skillshare is basically an online community where you can learn whatever skill you might want to learn. Um, honestly, there is an incredible array to choose from. Um, like you think of a skill, you can probably learn on Skillshare. And they have these things called learning paths, which is where they take different lessons from different teachers and then they put them together in one place. Um, so you can kind of like learn from a load of different people at once and there is one which is transform your study habits which is of course very useful for students and of course I did do it because I was interested to see what it said it's so valuable to learn from other students and to see what works for other people with studying it can be quite personal and there are things that will work for one person but won't work for another person but trying things out is just valuable and can help you to be more effective so the Transform Your Study Habits one, for example, is composed of three classes. Anyway, if you do want to try out Skillshare, then of course there will be a link in the description box and the first 500 people to click on that link can get one month for free. So I would highly recommend clicking if you just want to learn something new. It's completely free, um, so why not learn something? Yeah, so thank you so much Skillshare and I'm now going to get on to doing some studying. Then by her women's help, the corpse she raised, and by strong arms into her window drew, so pitiful a sight was never seen. Little and little Antony was pulled, now breathing death. His beard was all unkempt, his face and breast all bathed in his blood, so hideous yet. And dying as he was, his eyes half closed upon the queen he cast, held up his hands and helped himself to raise, but still, with weakness back his body fell. The miserable lady with moist eyes, with hair which careless on her forehead hung, with breast which blows had bloodily benumbed, with stooping head and body downward bent, enlaced her in the cord, 
and with all force, this life-dead man courageously upraised. I'm meeting Jade in five minutes and I've just tidied my room because, of course, I don't want it to be a state when she comes. I'm really excited to see her though and I managed to get bits done. I got the comments done and then I planned chapter two or did some more planning of chapter two, but I didn't make a plan of things to do with Jade. Okay, I'm gonna do that very quickly <laughs> in the next like two minutes. Now, I hadn't seen Jade for months, not since September when the world was a different place from the one it is now. It's funny with friends that time can pass like this. Jade and I met back when we were 17 and had both just received our rejections from Oxford, and we just clicked. You know what that's like when you just click with a person. Can we do a cheers? Cheers! And truly, it's always a joy to see her. I feel like joy is the only word. Jade is just such a joyful person. And it was amazing to have her come and visit in Oxford. Now, when we're together, we laugh a lot, but we also have very good discussions. And one thing we were talking about a lot is what it means to live a good life, what it means to feel fulfilled. On a scale of one to 10. I think it's a 10 out of 10. No. I truly think you just changed my life. Like, this is amazing. Guys, if you haven't tried this, you need to go try it. It's, it's like soft and buttery in the inside. <laughs> we just raving about it and I was like, maybe we should get this on film. Yes. It's so, so good. Because it's, yeah. it's so hard to find them. Usually yes, they're like are hard to find. really yes um, yeah blinky, you're right yes yeah, stale good word so bad yeah. but awful but this yeah this. this is oh so this layered but you can you can hear the crunch and i love the raspberry mm -hmm. a really good addition We'd both individually come to that conclusion that purpose is what it means to live a good life. Purpose. From the Latin pro, forth, and ponere, to put or place. So literally to put forth, a word linked irrevocably to the act of proposing. It's an act of preparing, of acting with an awareness of the future. But of course, it's not that final future success, the fulfillment of that purpose, which will make you happy. Achieving your degree, finishing that book, getting a good mark or a promotion. Yes, you will feel satisfied. Yes, it is a reason to celebrate and to be proud, but the joy and meaning derived from purpose is the process of achieving it. It's in the everyday. It's enjoying those pastries, the rainfall, the feel of February wind on your cheeks. It's meals with friends you haven't seen for years. These meals and interactions which pop up along the way. You can't save them for when you're done, for when you have more time. I always used to tell myself to wait, until the end of the school term, until my exams were done, until I was less busy. Look at him! He's really dirty water though. But I've realised, and I kind of want to say this to you now, that it's better to do them now, and encourage yourself to really enjoy the process of working towards your goals. Because purpose, and I'm going to say this again because I just want to stress it, it's in the everyday. It's not rushing, but enjoying the process of working towards that goal and filling yourself with the light and possibility of what it might bring. It's enjoying the hard work, that late night class, the challenge of working out something new, because this work is what will make your purpose even sweeter. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Jay, can you introduce where we are? Yes, okay, so we are at the Randolph Hotel and we're in their restaurant called The Alice. So everything is kind of Alice in Wonderland themed. And it's so funny because Ruby, we sent an email to them yesterday and we were thinking, what should our sign off signature be? And we were talking about it for ages, like yeah, going back like, and forth, warmly, deliberating. You know, kind regards feels a bit, a bit, Bland. Yeah, exactly. Boring. Yeah, but and not Ruby normally loves something like all the best or all the very best. Only the very Only best. Only the very best. <laughs> Only the very best. But we decided to sign it off as See You in Wonderland. Thank you.
look at this. This is so special. So, Jay, do you want to point out what we've got? Yes, so we have got some sandwiches with, I believe, cucumber, vegan cheese, harissa, and then we've got some vegan scones, which is such look a rare occurrence, these. and some vegan clotted cream, and some jam, and then we've got macaroons, in cuter. Oh yes, do, 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 do. Oh, I haven't even seen the middle ones. Little brownies. <laughs> do a little, a little twirl for you. <laughs> Lazy season. Yeah. And the cheesecake looks so good. It really does. <laughs> okay, now this afternoon tea has the craziest story. We met the loveliest woman, Patricia, um, yesterday, the day before this. And after talking, we received an email for an afternoon tea that she had bought us. Now we did not know what to say, still I don't know what to say, still I don't qu quite know how to properly say thank you, but we had the most wonderful time and just want to stress again how grateful we are for this, how grateful we are for you Patricia, so thank you. Oh, and I don't know if you can tell from these videos, but we drank so much tea. We had so many pots in total. My favourite, I would say, was the Earl Grey. A high quality Earl Grey you just can't go wrong with. Jane, I don't know if they should trust you with a tea strainer. I just keep, I just keep having these impulses to have more tea and I don't think so I just pour it and then I end up with loads of pieces of chai in my no. mug. Oh and they Well you can read your tea leaves now. So after our wonderful afternoon tea, we went on a walk to Christchurch Meadows. Um, these are beautiful. There are so many green spaces in Oxford um, and it's so bizarre to see massive rolling fields right in the middle of a city. Actually, there's something quite magical about it. In the evening, we went to a formal dinner. Um, it was like the Sunday dinner that we have at Jesus. It's got an A written on it. Yeah, it's an A. Wow, that's quite cool. That is really cool. Because you're an A star student. The vegan food here is always so good. I'm always surprised. Um, but that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me tonight um, and for joining me this weekend. I hope that you have more than just a productive week.